Today we're here in Rowland County. I'm here with Zach Couch and today is a super special day. Tell us what we're doing today. Today we're going to go out and do a release. It's actually the first time in uh, Kentucky's history that we are releasing hellbenders back into the wild. Most outdoors people have never seen a hellbender. What are we looking for today? Hellbender is actually our largest species of salamander we have in the state. They can be over two feet long. They live in fairly decent sized streams and rivers. They have to have these really big boulders that they live under. So that's why most people haven't seen them. They're actually hidden in plain sight underneath of some of these large boulders in a creek. So we've spent the last four years going out, surveying different streams in Kentucky, trying to see which streams actually still have populations of hellbenders. And what we've determined is our population in Kentucky is really Really declining for a lot of different reasons. So as a result of that, we've started going into the streams where we know that we can find these egg masses. In the wild, the eggs maybe have 1% chance of survival, but in a lab, we can get 60, 65% survival. So we've worked with Purdue University. We pull the egg masses out of the stream. They raise the hellbenders for three or four years, and then we get to go back and actually restock some of these streams now that are declining. So we had a clutch of about 500 eggs from four years ago. We're keeping 25 of those as sort of our year one reintroduction program. And years moving forward, we'll have more and more that we'll release. The rest of those animals will actually go to Indiana and they're doing the same project up there. But the problem is they haven't found any egg masses in Indiana. So they're using some of our Kentucky animals to repopulate some streams in Indiana at the same time as we're doing the work here. So that's one reason why a university in Indiana is very interested in this project and working with us because they're literally rearing these things and then bringing them back and then also seeding some of them in their state as well. So both states are actually going to be benefiting. That's right. You know, the thing when you're looking at wildlife conservation is, you know, we're focused obviously on Kentucky, but these species are often in multiple states. And if the species is declining throughout its entire range, we should do what we can not just to better the population in Kentucky, but throughout the range of the species so that we have multiple sites to diversify where we can find this animal at to hopefully keep it off of the endangered species list, which is our ultimate goal here. They're not here yet they're on their way from Purdue we're going to be getting 25 right that's right what are we gonna be looking at size wise they're probably gonna be somewhere in the range of six maybe ten inches long okay. something like that so by the time they're that size most fish species unless it's a muskie probably don't have a whole lot of worries there do they Right, it's not gonna be so much fish. River otters are gonna take a few of them. The main reason that they're declining is actually, we have to find good habitat, not only for adults, but also for those larvae. Okay. And the larvae really need those clean gravel streams to be able to get up in the little areas in the gravel. And that's where they hide out at until they grow to adulthood. So Zach, we're saying this is a release and it is a release, but it's kind of a controlled release. It is. What we've done is we've built these soft enclosures that we'll actually be able to put the animals in and it'll hopefully contain them on site for a few days. And the whole idea there is, uh, you know, these animals have been in a lab all their life. We're putting them out here in the wild. We don't want them to start moving around too much on day one and not being able to really figure out what they're doing and then be easy prey for any predators that move through. So what Purdue has found in some of the work they've done in Indiana is you put them in these soft-sided enclosures in the stream for a couple days. The hellbenders start to kind of figure out their environment, figure out their surroundings, and then we'll come back in three or four days, remove that soft enclosure, and then they can slowly distribute throughout the stream where they need to go. So once we get the animals here on site, we've got some coolers, we'll put them in with some water to make sure that we don't stress them out any more than we have to. They even brought red and blue buckets. I thought they'd be black and gold buckets. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Right now we are headed down to the creek and then we'll slowly get the hellbenders moved down and we'll bring them out into the stream. We've already got our soft enclosures set up in a good spot, good looking habitat. We'll have you and whoever else we have here today as volunteers helping us take the hellbenders out of the coolers and slide them into the soft enclosure. And just from there, it's a hands-off process of letting them settle into their new environment. We will come back here every year and monitor the site. All the animals that we'll be receiving today have a pit tag in them. It's the same thing as people having their pets sometimes. Okay. Uh, for the lost pet, we have those already embedded into the hellbender, so we can go out and actually see which hellbender we catch in the wild, pull it out and be able to use a wand on it to see, okay, this is an animal that we released in 2022 that was actually brood stock from 2017. These could be producing offspring for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yep, that's the plan is to be able to recover this population to where in let's say 10 years from now, we have the population back throughout its historic distribution in the state. They're reproducing on their own and we can move on to conserve another species that is declining. 
you know, we don't want to do this work forever. We just want to be able to kind of head start this population. This is considered triage. This is just enough to keep the population going until we address some of the upstream issues with sedimentation into the stream. Hey, this is really cool work. I've done some cool projects to you. You really get to do some fun things. But a hellbender is such a unique animal. I have spent countless hours flipping rocks and in streams, and I have never seen one in the wild. It's I've really seen great. them in aquariums, and I've mm -hmm. seen them locations like that. But so today, to get out here and physically get your hands on one and turn one loose into the wild, what a treat. This is a big day. Anytime we can take animals from the lab and release them back into the stream to recover a population, that's a big win for us. This is something that we couldn't have done without the membership with our Kentucky Wild Program, who have actually provided financial support to go out and put our artificial nest boxes out and to do some of the work that we're doing here today. This is a special day here in Kentucky, not only for conservationists and members of Kentucky Wild, but also our biologists, so great work. Thank you.